Hello. So um, this is a talk about uh, GNU PG, which is act actually not that much to do with uh, the kernel development, but it's just one one of the tools like GCC and uh, XM or whatever you, ever you use. And uh, so it's a bit different, but a bit more related to the former talk, which was actually very interesting, and I would love if it could have been extended. So. Um, um, this is a kind of a status report on GNUPG and some other things. So, um, where are we with GNUPG? Um, after the Snowden things, um, I decided to keep on working on GNUPG, and the result of this was GNUPG 2.2, released uh, four weeks ago. Um, but before that, we had a long series of 2.1 releases which were kind of development versions, but uh, actually it was more kind of the stable thing, so there was only just one renaming thing, and uh, now there is 2.2, and uh, the most distros already have uh, very similar versions, like 2.1.18 uh, in Debian, um, which is pretty similar to the current version. Um, the development model will be now that uh, there will be a 2.3 version uh, for development. Um, so basically, it will be Git for a long time, and uh, the plan for this is to um, add the features we require for the for the update of uh, OpenPGP because OpenPGP the standard needs to be updated. Uh, so, for example, that we have a better fingerprint and um, remove all requirements for all algorithms, which are and into not not so good anymore. So, for example, uh, triple dash you should not use triple dash for encrypting large amount of of data anymore. Um, this is hard coded into the standard, so there needs to be an update of the standard. Unfortunately, the uh, standard update process requires that we uh, have an implementation. And uh, well, okay, and well, that's what what we're we going to do with the in development for GNUPG in the next month or in the next year. Okay, back to the uh, current version, which is 2.2, and the uh, main features are that um, we now have a thing which is called a easy uh, key discovery. Um, this works if you encrypt to someone using a mail address, so no key ID or fingerprint, so, and you don't have that key in your local key ring, uh, it will go out, out to a web server and ask whether the asked for the key, and what you get back then is the uh, authentic key for that mail address. So you will always be sure that th this is the key matching the mail address. Um, whether you can trust it is a different kind, different story. Um, I, I can later talk about this. Um, uh, the other thing which we already have for, yeah, which I'm using for six, seven, seven years now, uh, is the full uh, separation of uh, private keys and public keys. So we have this GPG agent, uh, which handles all private key stuff. Um, this is uh, independent of the protocol, so uh, GPG agent basically doesn't... Now, GPG agent doesn't know anything about the protocol used for the, for the keys, so it just cares about the keys. Uh, this also allows us to use uh, any kind of OpenPGP key for SSH, which is also implemented in SSH agent and GPG agent. And this more modelized system is uh, easier to maintain and uh, actually it's more secure and you can do nice things with that. For example, uh, you can run a GPG agent on your desktop machine and GPG on the server and you don't need to put to load up your private key to your server. For example, for signing large tarballs or other data or decrypting large data on the server using a more secured key on your desktop, uh, which can even be on a, on a smart card. This is uh, quite conven convenient, uh, yeah, maybe for uh, distributors and so on. Um, yeah, then we have elliptic curve cryptography there. Um, so, um, yeah, and we have a better command line interface support and so on. If, uh, oh, what we also did is uh, that we removed support for PGP2. PGP2 is very old, meanwhile it uses MD5 for a lot of things and MD5 is entirely broken, so it should not be used anymore. Um, but there's a little problem that uh, some people uh, still have data encrypted using a PGP2 key. 
And so for this reason, we keep uh, maintaining a GPG 1.4, which still supports the PGP two keys, the old keys, so that you can encrypt your old, st your old stuff a few people need this. So, but it's not integrated anymore in Group G plane too, so uh, you need a different tool for this. This makes the code base uh, less complex. Okay, so that I already told, talked about. So um, the uh, update for OpenPGP uh, will include a new fingerprint thing. Um, we will have authenticated encryption. Actually, we already have this. Uh, in uh, OpenPGP, but it's a kind of a talk thing, which is uh, which is okay, but it's not the state of the art of what cryptographers love. So there are, are currently discussions which uh, mode to use, and yeah, we have, we have a draft for this uh, what what to do with them. And uh, there will also be new default algorithms, for example, that we're using SHA two, uh, SHA two five six exactly uh, for the fingerprint. <laughs> This is nothing critical right now because the fingerprint is only used uh, in a kind of, um, we only need a pre-image, uh, only a pre-image attack um, um, would compromise the keys. And these are far away from, uh, uh, from reality that uh, you can do, that you can do um, a pre-image attacks on SHA-1. But anyway, we need to move on. And so this is um, why we have this uh, new thing there. Um, the other plan, what we want to do in GPG development and for the 2.2 thing is uh, that we are moving up in the stack, which means that we uh, will try to um, help people, implementers, to integrate GPG into their applications. So back when I started with the project in, uh, well, 17, 18, no, nearly 20 years ago, <laughs> um, I did a lot of work on mail user agents and so on. That was a small community and it worked very well. But meanwhile, many people or many hackers don't it just see, oh, there's GPG, I just script something and it, then it works. So there is kind of some breakage there and so we want to do or uh, help them to uh, modernize their, their stuff and also uh, integrate newer things uh, into mail user agent, other things, maybe also into Git, but I think the Git thing is... Uh, Quite okay, so no. Um, another task, what we want to do is a hardware thing. There is this uh, GNU K token, which is an, a microcontroller, so USB stick, uh, which is entirely free software thing. So that's only a standard microcontroller, STM32. And uh, we want to make it easier uh, that you can easier purchase, purchase these things. For example, they, they can't be, we can't sell them in Europe because there's no CE mark. Okay, that would be easy, but there's also no EE mark for recycling stuff and all these kind of things you need to do with, um, uh, with hardware. And so I'm uh, working with uh, guys from the Kernel Concepts or now Frost Shop in order ID3 P. Um, that we're doing a little bit of hardware, hardware work there and uh, just uh, make it easier available, this, to this token. Um, okay. Okay, and we should uh, have better documentation. Right now we basically have man pages, also reference manual, and the old uh, GNU uh, privacy handbook is, uh, well, it's old, very old, and it needs to be updated. So, um, why do we want to, uh, other algorithms, in particular ECC? Um, the reason is that the cryptographers uh, tell us that uh, RSA is not safe enough for the future. For example, we could go to 4K RSA keys, but it does not bring very much. So in the end, for real good security, we would need, need a 16K RSA key, but that's uh, really you can't work with these kind of keys. They are too long, it takes too, it takes too long. You, you wouldn't be able to use it on small devices and in particular not on smart cards, for example. And so that's, that's no way to go. And the new thing is ECC. Uh, it's not actually new because ECC is a very old thing. It's uh, actually better researched than uh, RSA. And so we know a lot about ECC algorithms and yeah, that's what, um, what everybody is moving, moving to. Um, there are some problems with e e ECC. Um, there are certain curves. So, for example, in ECC, we don't talk about key sizes, but about curves. 
they have an implicit size, of course, um, but they, they are different. So there, for ECC, you, had, uh, you have a bunch of parameters and not just the key size. And the uh, curves uh, from the NIST, which are required by the US uh, Sweet B thing, so for any government work, um, they have a pretty bad reputation. So this is uh, while basically nobody wants to use them anymore in the free software community and also in the entire security community, they don't want it. So you can you use them only if you're really required to do this. Um, and there is an alternative, uh, which, is, uh, which are the uh, European brain pool curves, um, which are better, but slower. They are better in this kind that we know how the parameters have, uh, have been uh, researched and how they came to these parameters. Um, some people, uh, for example, in, in Germany, uh, for any restricted communication thing, the NIST curves are just no way and they really want to have the brain pool things because that's better, they research and this is all. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, we won't use that too slow, too old thing. So we use modern curves like uh, curve 25519 and uh, Goldilo Goldilocks. And there are also some variants of this curve which are basically the, the same, but the other expressed, uh, which, we, which you can better use for signing, which is uh, even more, more robust than other things. Um, that's what we're going to do. In GNUPG, we already have support for Curve 25519 for encryption and for signing. Signing is called then ED25519, if you see that. Um, the uh, stronger curves um, will eventually be implemented, but there's no, no real need for this. So, for example, these, uh, these curves have these same strange, strange uh, like in uh, 16K RSA key, some say. So why do we need this? If you look at uh, git out, uh, git log, uh, you see in, uh, this is the size of an RSA 4K key for signing. So what most people use these days, it's not the default in GNUPG, but uh, many people uh, require this for 4K. Um, it looks this way. And if you move to uh, the key, uh, to an uh, ECC key, uh, it's uh, smaller. Okay. That's not really a, a thing. It looks better, and so, but um, this space is not, not really, it does not really matter. Uh, what matters more is, uh, is performance. So I did some benchmarking here. And um, if you look at these, um, OK, um, hardware tokens like the smart cards are very, very important because they avoid key compromise. Uh, so if, you're got, if your machine has been compromised, you won't <coughs> lose, uh, lose your key. So you can keep on using your key. And uh, that's an advantage, and that's the reason why, uh, why it, uh, smart cards should be, should be used, because they are much simpler than any, uh, all the other kinds of boxes, and uh, the three-letter agencies are going to just infect, bug all kinds of machines. Um, just to get the plain text and because they can't break the encryption. So at least uh, we, we can do something against this by using smart cards. Uh, it's anyway, it's very convenient. So these smart cards, this is the tight control card, which, is, uh, which we use for GNUPG uh, for a long time now. Uh, it's based on an NXP processor. It is an actual crypto chip with all these shields and mesh things on, on top of it. So it's a bit hard to... Uh, just look inside and um, uh, test the uh, test for the uh, for the actual private key in the in the card. Um, so the numbers for this, if we use a 2K RSA key, so it takes half a sec half a second uh, to sign something. I think okay, that's acceptable. Half a second. Okay. But if, um, it also means that if you want to decrypt something, it also takes half a second, which is not that good if you if you're if you're browsing through your all your all your mails and you have to encrypt everything so half a second second is not good but uh, maybe acceptable and uh, if you now move for the card for uh, to a 4k key uh, it takes nearly three seconds for signing and decrypting so there is no way to really work with this you don't want to work with this it just takes takes too long it just handles everything so and um, uh, what we can do is move away from this and use a different curve. 
of course, we could uh, implement these elliptic curves stuff in these curves, uh, in, on these uh, cards, but the problem is these cards are proprietary. So there is a chip on it, you have to sign NDA, then you can write your own card OS, but that's a lot, <laughs> that's expensive to do this. So are there proprietary com companies to do this? For example, Side Control, which is a small German company, and they have their card OS for this. And yeah, can we trust it? Um, there's even we don't know the exact code for the Open PGP application, which is also on this on the smart card. So um, I don't feel very good with this. So it's accepted for me because I trust these com I trust these companies, and so I sign my releases also with using this card. This card. Um, the advantage is of course that. The crypto chip, it's a crypto chip and it's better protected against hardware attacks. Um, but our real attacks are not uh, that someone goes and just steals your card, but the real attacks are from, uh, coming, from, coming from outside, um, basically through your machine to the card. And so the uh, actual crypto um, security of the crypto chip is not that important because uh, if you use it like, like a, your key or your door key, or it's Basic, it's good protected for most for most people for us. Uh, so what we what we do what uh, Niebesan did are uh, is to um, um, build this GNU token, which is using STM microcontroller, a very simple controller. Well, actually, it's not that simple enough, but uh, it's quite simple. Uh, it's quite simple. It's simpler hardware. It has definitely no management engine. Uh, so, and you wrote an implementation also for RSA, uh, but RSA is of course slower because it's not a crypto chip. There's no accelerator code in it. And so, when, but when we move to the uh, curve two five five one nine for this thing, uh, things are different. And you can see that that, sign, that signing here only takes uh, fifty milliseconds, and that's pretty fast. So it's, Comparing um, different algorithms on different kind of CPUs, so it's not a really a comparison of either the speed of the CPU or the speed. Yeah, yes, uh, right. Just I, I wanted to explain. Um, we have these cards and we have these tokens and what the difference is. So, okay. And that was okay. Okay, uh, uh, a drawback of the whole thing is that RSA is light, lightning fast with verification. So if you look at the num uh, numbers, the verification even for a 4K key is just one millisecond, and the uh, uh, elliptic curve thing is uh, six milliseconds, which is not that good. That is, of course, on a different machine. It's on my, it's on my, lap on my laptop. And um, we can improve it a little bit because our code for this is not the uh, general used uh, DGB code uh, for portability reasons. Um, and because the code is not very well engineered, for example, there's not a single command in the entire code, so it's uh, hard to maintain this code though and uh, know what it works. Um, but we are, are working on this to make it a little bit faster then. But in general, it's slower, but there's also more security in the ECC stuff. Um, okay, that the algorithms and um, many people are <coughs> asked in the past why it's so hard to automate using uh, doing key management with GPG and script this. Um, the reason for this is that uh, I wrote GPG as a replacement for PGP, and PGP is the background of being a DOS program, so Microsoft PC DOS program back then in the before we had Linux. And uh, so it had a lot of problems and do things. So the advantage of this was definitely to um, um, to handheld the user and tell them what they need to do and what is good and what what's not good. Um, so it's not a real Unix tool in the uh, um, key management part. Um, you can do with libgpg. Libgpg me. Uh, you can do. Uh, Jimmy, you can uh, automate most most tasks. Um, for you. there's a stable API 
uh, to do encryption, signing, every, everything, and a uh, lot, lot of things, but not real deep uh, key management things. Um, so we need a better API for this, and we have not yet come up, oh, it took quite some time before we came up with a new API, uh, because it was not clear what to put in GPG me, uh, whether these esoteric options GPG has, there are re it really makes sense to put them into an API, uh, into an API and maintain it forever then. So, um, well, but meanwhile, uh, we know what is needed, and so um, we started to add some what, commands, which are just uh, the prefix quick, um, which, are, so, which I explain now. For example, uh, for key generation, you can do a GPG quick generate key or quick gen key, and you just give a user ID. And I would suggest use just your mail address and nothing else like the mail or so, just the mail address. Uh, so, but anyway, you can, can use all kind of user address, put it in, and that's, that's it. Um, if you want to do more, so if you want to specify the algorithm to use, uh, you can, for example, uh, use future default, which would use an, an ECC key. This is not right the default because most implementations uh, are not yet up to GPG 2.2, but they have old, older versions and can't work with these ECC keys. So that takes a bit until uh, GPG 2.2 is deployed enough that we can switch the default. But there is already a future default, and for example, I have a signing subkey which uh, uses ECC, and uh, for several other things also I use ECC, and uh, other people also started to use it. Um, if you don't want the pathways, which is perfectly okay, so if your key is actually on, on the, on the ma machine, I think, um, but you have to decide, um, you can just do it this way, quick generate key, and, uh, give a password as an empty string, and uh, add batch, then it would really not ask whether any, anything. Um, okay, a uh, new thing with GPG 2.2 is that the, a new key will be generated with an uh, expiration time of two years at once. So that's uh, so that if you upload that uh, key to a key server, um, it will expire at some time. So, for example, you lost your pa forgot your passphrases or something. So um, it just will expire. Um, but that's not a problem because OpenPGP allows to prolong the expiration time at any time. Uh, at any time. So there is also a command, of course, that's quick set expire, and you give the fingerprint, and use a dash for the default, which is, uh, which are more another two years, or just specify the date or so. Um, you can add subkeys, which are a very convenient thing, uh, because, for example, you can put an SSH key there and, and so on. Uh, this works by a quick add key, fingerprint, and then, then you definitely should give an algorithm, because else it would use an, uh, create a new encryption key, which is also okay because uh, a new encryption key, you can do a key rollover for having some forward secrecy so that you, every year you create a new subkey. It doesn't change your web of trust or anything because it's just a sub, sub key. Uh, common thing is that you switch companies and you get a new mail address. Uh, so quick edge user ID, fingerprint, new user ID, so with mail address. At this, you leave the company, you do a quick revoke user ID, so it's not usable anymore. And sometimes you like to have your uh, cool mail address always displayed, so you can uh, s um, set a primary user ID which is displayed when only uh, one of the user IDs is displayed. So this, there's also a command for this. Our key signing parties. Um, some people do this and sign others keys, so this can be done now with quick sign key, fingerprint, and that's it, it's signed, but if, you, if people, um, the others uh, on the party only want certain user IDs to be signed, you, you just give these user IDs as additional arguments. Um, a common task is also to sign a key locally only, which means it's not exportable, so it's not visible in the web of trust for others, but it's for you and you mark the key as trusted. So. And then you use L sign. Uh, another feature which was kind of uh, accidentally happened that uh, that we needed this feature for an, for another thing, R is the dash F com, uh, option, and you give uh, to the <coughs> dash F you give a file with just one key. So you, this means you don't need to import a key into the key ring, but you can just take one key. Give it as argument on the command line, and it will encrypt to this key. 
So, for example, you get some on a, from, from a <coughs> web form, you get, a, you get a key and you can immediately encrypt this without that uh, all keys are, are put into the key ring. So it's, I think it's quite convenient and uh, uh, use, a useful, useful thing for certain applications. So, key servers. A problem, we have a very good uh, network of key servers. Um, which are also reachable by Tor and using Tor Onion service and they're reachable by using HTTPS and all kind of stuff. Um, but the problem with the key servers is um, if, if you don't have a key of, from someone, you can try to search for a key on the key server. You might find, for example, you want to write me, you will find a key of two keys from me. Uh, one is a fake key that is not made by me. So on people just oh, well, that's okay, and this, and write to me, and I, I get angry because I receive an encrypted mail to me and can't decrypt it. Um, so for this use case, so this key discovery, we need something else. And uh, the simple idea, we, there's, there's one idea, we could use the DNS with Dane, there's a standard for this, or an experimental standard uh, to, uh, to use um, one of the OpenPGP Dane for this, to look up the key in the DNS. The problem with this is, um, first, a DNS is not encrypted, so you leak more things. And the more important thing is, um, who is able to edit the sound file? Well, I can do that from my domains because I run my own DNS server, but most today are not able to do this. So this has practical problems. It would only work for large providers then. Um, What's easier is that uh, many people have their own uh, web server, and so we can do the same. So if you, for wk at gnupg.org, you would go to um, uh, this fetch my key from gnupg.org slash uh, well-known slash openpgp uh, slash hu slash uh, some hash thing. The hash thing is just for just mapping mapping my us the username, the mail address, to a character set which you can uh, use on a file system so that, that there's no slash in it. Also. And so you can look up the key. Uh, you get the key from, from the domain matching, the, uh, matching the, ma the mail address. This is a pretty easy thing to, to do. It's, uh, it, doesn't say, it doesn't say that you really can trust, uh, trust this key, but what you want to write a mail to someone you don't know. So how can you trust it anyway? Any, any, anyway. So, that's a, that's a, so what we do is now we tell we have key discovery first, just to get a key matching a mail address, because you can't use a mail address directly to encrypt to the mail address. So you need the key. And establishing a trust or a validating the key is a, different, is a different thing which comes later. Uh, nevertheless, we need the key servers, for example, for revocation certificates on, and for checking signatures. So as long as you, as you have the fingerprint, you can reliably get keys from a key servers. Thus, we keep on maintaining the key servers, and uh, there is all kind of support for this. Um, some people uh, mention verifying key servers, um, um, which are key servers with, um, which do a challenge response. If you load something up, you do, they do a challenge response uh, to check whether you really have the, uh, this mail address in, in your key. But the problem with this is um, that such a key server would be under a strict control from one entity because there can only be one and it is, won't, won't be decentralized. And so we would rely on a single authority, and that's all bad. We know all this from X500, or it does not, it does not work. So I, what I want to say is that the key servers, as they are, are a good resource, and they're valuable, still because they're uh, decentralized. Um, well, the web of trust, this is the thing what we used to use like these key signing parties. The problem with the web of trust is um, uh, it's very hard to explain, even to hackers and people who know this. It's really complicated. 
It also um, publishes a global social graph, so it's uh, always visible who met someone when at a certain time. So that's not so good, but it, it's okay because there are enough other, other resources, so it's public that we are all sitting together here. For, exa for example, that would not be uh, that would not harm that too much. Um, but also the web of trust does not scale very well. So for the, the 10, 20, 50,000 uh, keys, it works, or more people doing this. So um, what everyone else does is trust on first use, um, which is easy to explain. I just I tell, you it's, I tell you SSH thing. Okay, it's a little bit different than SSH, but that's basically how, how it works. And it is local, so you don't need some central service or, or a web of trust, but you have your local data, database um, with context, uh, your known hosts, if we compare that with SSH. And so this keeps the PGP properties, which uh, the one of the PGP properties was that uh, PGP is decentralized, that, they, that you don't need to rely on some centralized service. Uh, and this, the TOFO thing, um, better, um, better does this. Um, we have this implemented, which was pretty complicated, so for the details in, uh, in GPG. Um, there are still not some concerns about this, um, about some details. Uh, so it is not the default trust model, but you can try it out, and uh, using trust, mod trust model TOFO, or actually TOFO plus PGP, it's down, written down on the main page. Uh, so, which is a combination of both things. So you can try it, uh, <coughs> uh, check it out if, if, you, if you like to do that. Um, eventually it will be the default. So, um, finally, there are two interfaces in GPG. The common interface is what you, what, what you see if you type GPG. Uh, you can do key listings and all kind of stuff. So people, unfortunately, people go uh, go and just script this interface. But there are problems with this. For example, the general problem with uh, scripting things. So uh, it might be translated. So you need to do LCL, LCL equals C in your script. Most scripts don't don't do this. And the other thing is the character set is the native character set. What you see on the on the console which is not necessarily always UTF-8. And uh, the strings may also change with the next release. If you just figure out, it would be better to turn it around and print different. So that's not very stable. But anyway, people are using this, but they should not do this. The other interface is the machine interface, or call it annotated interface. Um, which is for, designed for scripting, it has fixed strings, they, uh, they make up an API, 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 which we have not changed since the first release of GPG. It's always UTF-8 and, and so on, and it can easily be um, enabled using with columns and the status FD, um, which I put to standard error in general, but you can use any other file descriptor for this. And uh, with this and org, you can easily script this, uh, but of course you can also do this in C or any other language. Um, with columns, it's also easy to pass because it's uh, just a columns and percent escaped output. So you find everything in details of how this works in doc details in GPG for more well, nearly 20 years. So. And uh, I think this is important and I just need to stress this. If you do anything with GPG, use this interface used with columns and used with uh, status FD. Um, sometimes you want to do uh, strange, uh, strange things to, to your keys or you want to filter th uh, stuff. For example, there's, um, I have some vanity, um, vanity signatures on my, on my key, actually uh, uh, thousands, I think. So, which print on the key server listing like uh, Happy X Mass or something, uh, and these are made up with keys and, and so on. But this is annoying because my keys are so several megabytes long. 
what I did was um, in my GPG conf I have an import filter which is uh, drops all signatures which are created uh, on Christmas and there was another thing in uh, March last year so that's simple and effective to remove them and uh, these uh, Filters can be used for several things. For example, in the middle of the screen, you see the import option, show only import file. What this does is it lists you the contents of the file if, it, if that file is a key, is a key file, has a key. Uh, in the past, people used the uh, default thing from GPG, so just GPG file, and it spit out something about the, about the key. But actually, this, this, came, this came from a different part of GPG, and the uh, format was slightly different uh, from the regular list key outputs. And that does not work so well. It should not be used. So um, there's now a command or, um, to really look at keys in a, in, a, in a better way, which is this one. Maybe we can even make, make it a, a, shorter, a shorter thing for this, but well, this is what we have right now. In Debian, this does not yet work. You need to use uh, dash n and uh, um, uh, import a show only. No, no. Oh, I forgot. There's, an, there's another option, which uh, because it's show only is, is newer than what is in Debian. Um, what you can do with this is also a thing which is, uh, has been commonly requested is, for example, you have several user IDs on your key and you want to send your key to, to, someone, el to someone else, but you don't want to send the entire key, but just the key with this certain user ID. Uh, for example, there's a German provider uh, who only accepts key for his web key directory if there's only one user ID and, the user, and without a name, just the address spec from, uh, from, the, from the mail. So um, using this option, on, uh, using this filter, you can just, just filter out certain parts of the key and it removes everything else and then send this on to wherever you want to send, send this key. Um, there are a couple of uh, uh, rules you can use for this. Uh, it's all in the man page. Um, by the way, uh, GPG agent uh, has support for the SSH agent. Um, in, I think most distributions meanwhile have enabled this. You can do this with enable SSH support in uh, GPG agent conf. Um, the thing is very similar to SSH agent because there is a protocol defined between SSH and the SSH agent. The difference is what uh, GPG does is uh, it takes, if you do an SSH add, with the key, to add all the keys to the running instance of the SSH agent, uh, GPG does something. Uh, GPG does something different than the uh, general SSH agent from from OpenSSH. Uh, it just makes the key permanent. It puts it into its own private key directory the, in the key, so it's permanently there, and you don't need to do an uh, SSH add any more then. Uh, but nevertheless, the SSH8-L and so on, this just uh, keeps on working. And for example, you can use a subkey, put a subkey on a smart, on a, a subkey on your general key, so it's marked as authentication. If you, for example, uh, create a new uh, smart card, a general key for a smart card, there will all be, always be a third key with flagged as authentication, which can then be used for SSH. Um, okay, so you can't live without this uh, SSH support in, if you're using GPG. That's really, I like it most. <laughs> okay, so summary here is uh, we have in GPG 2.2, we have modern algorithms, so we are prepared for the future. Uh, it's better scriptable. And we have this auto key discovery thing. With the uh, little drawback that not enough providers already support it. So we need to uh, talk to providers to support this web key directory stuff. So just having a, a well-known address and serve some static files. And there are tools in GPG uh, to install a server for, the, for this. So this also does a challenge response thing. There is an uh, internet draft for this, um, for this protocol. And it comes all with GPG. There is a blog entry which describes how to set this up. It's actually not very complicated. Um, but take care. So 
already said that Debian has an older version. And unfortunately, Ubuntu, I think the uh, long-term LTS release as two, uh, 2.1.11, uh, along with an older libg crypt, um, which means that uh, certain things don't work. For example, en encryption with um, ECC does not really work there in this combination of Ubuntu, so take care, so I can't do anything about this. Um, that's from me. Any questions, I hope? Apart from the GNU PG key, what support is there for external tokens, things like PKCS11? <laughs> um, okay, so the PKCS11 thing is, um, PKCS11 is um, a very strange protocol format interface spe specification, as you probably know. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that I don't see the see a need for PKCS 11 on the free software platform um, because the only use back then when we uh, worked on this uh, for PKCS 11 was to allow proprietary drivers for smart cards on your, mach on your machine. So what, P um, what the smart card vendors uh, did was to um, source out some code from their smart cards into their, into their drivers uh, so, and let them run on, on that machine. And uh, having this uh, Closed source things on a machine is not a good idea, in, uh, my, in my opinion, and that is why um, we don't start it with PKCS 11 support directly. But um, Mozilla, Firefox, and Thunderbird they use PKCS 11 um, um, for crypto tokens and for everything, and uh, we have a tool. This is called Scoot, Scoot.org, um, which provides, which is a um, PKCS 11 provider. So it provides all the keys from which GPG agent or which GPG knows using a PKCS 11 interface, and also the keys from a smart from a smart card. So it's just uh, not in the lower layer, but on the top layer. And you can use this, uh, for example, with Thunderbird uh, to end encrypt. You keep, um, your mails using X509 on CMS. But actually, I want to do it the other way around. Uh, I basically want to use the PKCS11 token for my GPG key, yeah. primarily because I want to root it in the TPM, and it's the easiest interface to get to work, because trying to do a TPM interface for libgcrypt looks particularly hard. Um, I know, I, I had for several weeks, I had a tab open on my browser with your, your blogs about the, the uh, TPM things and how to, how to use it, but unfortunately I had not the time to really read, read it. So I think the TPM thing, there is some interesting thing in it. And um, if that is really your concern or the, your use case, so I, I think we, we can up. We yeah, can up, I mean, can up I, with a solution for this. Or? I don't care about proprietary, and uh, yeah. PKCS11 is horrible, I agree, but it is the standard, so I can code to it, and if you coded to it, yeah. we would fit together without me having to do all sorts of other uh, jiggery-pokery. Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's just, uh, we have this, we have this uh, GPG stack, or you have some Thunderbird, Scoot, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, Scoot, GPG agent, SD daemon, uh, PCS, PCSCD and uh, and the card finally, and uh, just uh, uh, because CS11 tool would just be uh, would where would you where would it fit? We we can't use with, we can't use we can't use 11 down down there because we can't do everything what we need to do with the OpenPGB card for example with PKCS11, and. Um, um, we can't use this on, on top, really, so it would be just an, an enter a different, different thing. Well, it's a problem. We need to solve it. So. Yeah, if, there, if there's a problem with TPM, so just... Um, I'm also interested in this, yes. Okay. One more simple question. Why it's not possible to use the same... Uh, key with a uh, different smart card, or uh, for example, one UB key and one smart card. Each time you have to delete the uh, old card and add the new one. 
Okay, um, there is an open back report uh, about, about this. I, I don't really understand the, the, the reason uh, for this because I never had this problem. Um, uh, so, for, for example, it's, um, you, you can uh, use several smart cards now at the same time and uh, uh, GPG selects just the right one, what, what you want, so that, that this kind of thing works. What people want is, um, I think the upshot of this is that we, we want to I, somehow identify the token so that you can present it, okay, or please insert this token or please insert the pin for this token. Okay, what we do to, uh, today is just um, display the serial number or the uh, of that of that token because it is something we can get from the from from the token, um, but that's not very very good because uh, nobody can remember a lot of serial numbers. So the uh, idea we have currently is um, that we that we allow you to uh, give a title to a key or a description and a short and a short title which will be displayed. Yeah. That would uh, do away with this uh, stop thing and. Uh, yeah, thing. but the issue I have is uh, I have the same key. But with two separate uh, smart cards. Yeah, I know. I, I know that. That's that ex exactly the thing. Where in, in the in the in the back report or in the feature request. So um, we are working on this. And actually, so um, the uh, smart card maintainer, the staff maintainer, uh, uh, is uh, well has the same pro has a similar problem. So he wants to have, have this blue token, uh, inside blue token, inside green token, and all. Kind of so we have an idea how to do this because we have an uh, uh, easy editable uh, private key format. Uh, so you can just use an editor and put whatever, uh, write whatever you want into this, and then we need to do something with the selection mechanism. Uh, what you need to do so? Yeah. Thank you. Will be solved. Actually, for the PKS, PKCS 11 thing, there is actually a tool so that you can use this PKCS 11 smart card. No, no, using open no. As, um, this, kind of, this is a hack of the SC daemon. And what the uh, Alan uh, there did is uh, to take a SCD version and, and put in some PKCS 11 thing for this. But uh, this is a fork of this, and the the internal API between the GNU PG components are not that stable. So we try to keep them quite stable, but um, they all belong together, and so that's not maintainable. This this thing, and uh, I don't know why it's still in, why it's in, in, in Debian because it can only cause a lot of problems. It may work in these certain use cases, but not in the in the general thing. Uh, is there any point continuing to expand the web of trust, or should we just switch to Tofu and let it rot? Uh, you mean whether you have a key signing party today, or...? Well, not specifically today, but just in general for people who are in the web of trust, and, or people who would like to be in it. <laughs> yeah, don't, better don't ask me, so um, <laughs> I don't want to do a key signing party. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't specifically about doing a key signing party. It was just what, what you think of the, whether there's any point in, in continuing to expand the web of trust or... Well, I, I don't, I think it's more like a party thing. It's, it's geeky. It's not real a good thing. There is um, the, um, uh, some researcher, they have a proposal for the, um, for an EU grant, um, whether you describe and... Uh, a kind of a new web of trust, which is uh, which is not the problem of uh, just publishing the entire graph. So, but uh, that's nothing which we will see in the near future. Okay. And frankly, I'm I'm more keen to uh, get this uh, tofu stuff into uh, into use. Right. And how does tofu work for? Um, and this is particularly relevant for the kernel. Uh, for software authentication models, like, for instance, if I, I'm, my, I have a key in the web of trust that's well connected, uh, Greg has a key in the web of trust that's well connected, and so I can verify his signatures on uh, uh, Git tags or kernel tarballs and be sure that they're correct. Whereas somebody who's not in the web of trust and who uses Tofu will get, the, get Greg's key from wherever uh, with the bad 32 problem and so on, and not and verify 
a tarball from somewhere and not, as a result, not be sure of the authenticity. Yeah, um, this is a really hard thing to do. So um, I think the, w w the best thing, uh, Debian does it in, in, in a very, very good way because they have a Debian, uh, they have a key ring, or actually several key rings and they maintain this, they maintain uh, keys used for signing releases and these keys are known so that, that's the best thing, and, and, and then what, what you do for this kind of thing is not to use GPG for this and verify, but use GPGV, which is GPG for verification, which is takes a, well, a called a curated key ring, where only the keys are in, well, um, which are trusted or we should be trusted, so your keys and the, whatever for, uh, who does uh, Linux releases. And so this boils down to the problem to distribute this key ring. So uh, in GPG, what uh, what we do is to distribute them all over the uh, in the tarball. There is this key ring. Um, the keys are listed in all announcement mails, and so just that we have several sources, and um, uh, users could just check cross cross check whether they have the right key. But this uh, initial setup of the key that's that's not that easy. So. And uh, for example, it, it took it took many years until I got a connect uh, got a web of trust connection to, to the kernel sources keys. And, uh, what do you think of alternative models like uh, key bases? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, so uh, I talked about this social graph, and uh, that is not uh, limiting uh, key base. I was not limiting this, but just extending extending this and requiring you that everybody goes to uh, Facebook, Twitter, and, and, and so on. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I, so I'm kind of a privacy privacy guy. I don't I don't like that. But all those people who are doing, using these social networks and uh, um, that might work for them. Yes. All right. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you.